Let's now talk about the anatomy of the heart. And so to start, let's describe the serous membranes that are surrounding the heart. So the heart is enclosed within a three-layered pericardial sac. It protects the heart from overfilling and produces this lubricating fluid. So the three layers are fibrous pericardium, parietal layer, serous layer, and a visceral layer. So what do these layers look like? Well, first, this is the chest section through the chest. There's our lungs. There's where the heart's located. And there is our fibrous pericardium in green. It's this uh, external fibrous layer um, that surrounds the serous pericardium and it's attached to the central tendon of the diaphragm, prevents the heart from overfilling. Now in purple, there's our serous pericardium, the prefix peri means around. It's a two-layered serous membrane, has an outer parietal layer and an inner visceral layer. And so the parietal pericardium, outlined in black there, covers the um, it's basically surrounding the um, heart. And so the parietal pericardium has a fibrous layer, and that's in green, the fibrous parietal pericardium, and then a serous layer called the serous parietal pericardium, and the two of them form this outer layer. Then intimately associated with the heart is the serous visceral pericardium, and between these two layers of serous membranes, there is this pericardial space filled with pericardial fluid that bathes the heart. Now, <coughs> pardon me, inside the heart, we have chambers and valves and vessels. So there's the right atrium. It collects blood, all systemic blood and coronary circulatory blood. Um, the superior vena cava brings blood from the head, neck, upper limbs. In fact, every tissue above the diaphragm brings it to the right atrium. The inferior vena cava brings all blood from all tissues below the diaphragm into the right atrium. And the coronary sinus returns coronary blood to the right atrium. Then this blood goes through the tricuspid valve, what's also called the right AV valve, and it then enters into the right ventricle. The right ventricle receives all deoxygenated blood from the body and the coronary circulation or systemic in coronary circulation, and then sends it through the pulmonary valve. Pulmonary means lung because it's telling you this valve is going to send blood through the pulmonary valve into pulmonary arteries out to the lungs. This is an example where an artery in the body is taking deoxygenated blood. So just remember, pulmonary arteries are going away from the heart. A for away. Arteries always take blood away from the heart. They go to the lungs because once in the lungs, they're going to exchange gas. So now the pulmonary veins go from the lungs with oxygenated blood. These two, uh, four pulmonary veins, two on each side, dump their oxygenated blood into the left atrium. And the left atrium then um, delivers the blood through the bicuspid valve. It's also called the mitral valve or the left AV valve too many names, into the left ventricle. And the left ventricle is now going to send the blood to all tissues of the body, heart, systemic, and so forth. And this is why if we look at a cross-section through the heart, that left ventricle myocardium is um, remarkably thicker than the right ventricle. Right ventricle just sends blood to the lungs a few inches away. Left ventricle is sending it to the top of your toe into that ugly pinky toe you've got. Then the blood goes through the aortic valve into the aorta, ascending aortic arch, descending, and so forth. So there's the heart anatomy. Now, the orientation of our chambers is, is a little interesting. Here's an anterior view of the heart. The right border of the heart is primarily the right atrium. Now, the right ventricle primarily forms the anterior border of the heart. It's the part of the heart that is touching the sternum and the associated costal cartilage. The left atrium forms the posterior border of the heart. This is the part of the heart that actually touches the esophagus. It's the most posterior portion. And then the base of the heart that's actually lying on the diaphragm, that inferior border, is the left ventricle. That's what's actually sitting, for the most part, on the diaphragm. And then there's the apex, which touches the diaphragm and it, the most inferior left portion of the heart. So let's review this again in a little bit of a cardiac cycle. There's our right atrium, sends deoxygenated blood through the uh, right AV valve into the right ventricle, which then pumps it through the pulmonary valve into the pulmonary arteries, going away from the heart, deoxygenated blood, to the pulmonary capillaries. And here we have those alveoli, these alveo or singular alveolus, which where the carbon dioxide from the blood and the oxygen from the alveolus are going to switch places. So the CO2 
by diffusion goes into the alveolus and the O2 from the alveolus goes into the pulmonary capillary. So now the blood exiting the pulmonary capillary is oxygen. And so veins bring blood back to the heart. And so the pulmonary veins go into oxygenated blood into the left atrium, which then goes through the um, bicuspid valve into the left ventricle, through the aortic valve into the aorta, and into all these systemic arteries. Now the opposite happens. In these systemic capillaries, there is a systemic tissue. And we have oxygen in our systemic capillaries. And then because of the, um, the f what happens in me metabolic processes in the tissues, these cells produce CO2 and they dump it into the tissues. So now oxygen diffuses from the capillaries to the tissues and into the cells. CO2 diffuses by a concentration gradient from the tissues into the systemic capillaries. So now the blood exiting those systemic capillaries is deoxygenated. And that send it, this deoxygenated blood is sent back to the right atrium. And we're back to the very beginning, a very good place to start.